we're back with the 50 and 50 today. A huge thanks to Netex and Romenka who do a huge range of mineral products uh, and you can, I've left a link for their website in the article. But I'm going to talk about grass technique today and I'm going to go into it in a bit of detail. Also known as staggers, a lot of people call it staggers or a clinical name is hypermagnesium, low blood, blood magnesium. So, so what is it? Um, it's basically low blood uh, magnesium in the blood because of a deficiency. And what does magnesium do? I suppose one of the key roles, there's a lot of things in the body, but nerve function, and that's why we see a lot of the symptoms that we, we do. Um, <clears throat> For your herd, you're targeting under 1% and really 0% for a grass technique because mortality can be over 30% in these cases. You know, so what are the symptoms? Often we'll go out into the animal, we'll just see them dead uh, because you have a short window and you know, you'll see evidence that they've been trashing, particularly the front and back legs, making an arc where they've been trashing and down. But if you get to them, they'll typically be trashing violently. Um, that you, you know, these animals, I always remember that their heart, you could nearly hear the heart pounding out of the chest the head will be moving and it's that convulsion of lack of nerve control almost. You will get subclinical hypermagnesium and something farmers should watch out for. I often used to get calls in spring to cows with meningitis or acting strange or gone off form and you know, you know, these cases can be, what I always notice with the behavior of the cows completely changed, very unpredictable and dangerous actually. Um, you will get it. So at this time of year, if you're in peak grass technique um, weather, you know, don't always presume something's a meningitis, have that at the back of your mind. And obviously that's conversations you have with your vet about clinical cases. So the clinical symptoms are quite obvious, they're down, these animals, there's not much time. So why is magnesium an issue in cows? The important thing to remember is that cow stores magnesium in her body and her bones but can't mobilize it quickly, so she needs daily intakes of magnesium. Daily intakes of magnesium, so anything that affects that will uh, potentially be a risk. Um, and her absorption rates, uh, uh, cows can be anywhere between 10 and 35 percent of oral magnesium. So she's not massively, uh, she isn't fantastic at absorbing magnesium. The other thing, either cows or sheep, in fairness, when, when they're lactating, there's an increase in magnesium going out of milk, so the daily intakes required goes up. If you have an animal down or found dead with grass technique, obviously the symptoms you'll see, the trashing, you can, your vet can take an eye uh, fluid sample to confirm or deny. Now soil itself, um, different soil types w w won't impact what herbage is, uh, what the levels of magnesium in herbage are, um, because you can have various uptakes for, for various reasons. But um, the key thing for this to remember is, look, you don't have much time and it's daily intakes. Okay. Why in the spring-based, uh, grass-based systems uh, is grass technique such a risk? And there's, a, there's probably a lot of things here, but um, you know, certain soar types, our modern perennial ryegrasses tend to be lower in magnesium, where your clovers tend to be a bit higher. Uh, that is a risk. So the type of sward we have, uh, while it's fantastic for uh, dry matter intake and having grass growing, it can be a risk for grass technique. Again, when we're applying fertilizers like nitrogen, uh, you get an increase in effectable rumen degradable protein or non-protein nitrogen. And what this does is leads to an increase in rumen ammonia, which can affect magnesium uptake. So just be very careful. And again, potassium, uh, if you think about your slurries, um, potassium locks up magnesium. So know your risk period between fertilizer slurry application and the sward being grazed. It could be a risk, especially if you're getting uh, a sudden case of it. And again, low sodium can affect uh, magnesium as well. Just remember, uh, this is a key point, anything that affects daily dry matter intake is going to affect um, uh, magnesium uptake and it, of course you know I'm going to talk about fiber here but gut transit time so if you have quicker gut transit time looser cows that could affect magnesium uptakes so the weather itself because of the adverse weather can stop dry matter intake cold weather is said to to slow uptake of, of, of magnesium by the plant that can be a, a risk Again, low fiber in, in spring lush grass can be a challenge because uh, of increased gut transit times. Uh, room and pH can drop a little bit and that all, along with oils, is a lot, we have a lot of oils in spring grass, that can affect magnesium uptake. So again, it creates a risk period at that time of year. In the autumn time of year, typically with suckers, you can see it and it's not to do with weaning time and stress. So what happens when cows get stressed is the magnesium uh, in the body changes from the bloodstream into more vital functions of the body, leaving extra the blood, the blood uh, magnesium low, which can be a risk because um, ultimately the blood and then it's the brain that's affected. Uh, so stress, you can see it in suckler, suckers, particularly on weaning. So that's another risk period. But obviously we're heading into the real risk period time for grass technique. And you can see there's a number of factors there. So if we think about grass technique, absolute 
key message it's an emergency you don't have any time and um, you know they, they can be difficult and dangerous animals to treat particularly if they're up but if they're down they're trashing around be careful always have two bottles of magnesium in the press at any one time it's a, a vital uh, thing you call your vet get that bottle of magnesium warm it up because it helps the absorption warm it up go to behind the cow at a safe distance give that bottle of magnesium while you're, you're waiting for a vet your vet then will apply a number of different treatments and sometimes we sedated animals to just because they were convulsing so violently just to get that heart to settle down and then give your magnesiums and your calciums a uh, key thing i suppose is another message is prevention if we know we're at risk period in our farms at the moment, we need to make sure that we have daily intakes of magnesium um, really know that there, there's magnesium going in. Again, if people are dropping meal, is there enough magnesium meal alone? Licks, buckets, boluses can be used, but they have a short window, three to weeks. You can use magnesium through the water. And uh, you know, it's sacrilege for some people to think, but fiber in the diet in the spring when, lush gra when grass is very, very lush, to try and slow those gut transit times and, uh, and counteract that low fiber and oil in grass is something um, that some farmers I, I have we have used in the past where cows would get a bit of a feed coming out of the parlor in the morning. Okay, so uh, prevention really key. Know where your magnesium is going in. Measure it. Have some idea that you have supplementing magnesium if you're in that category, which a lot of people are at risk. Um, and react to weather changes and understand that anything that affects dry matter intake, which is the feed intakes, can potentially increase the risk of magnesium because it's a disease we don't have much time for and at the moment it is uh, one of the ones we need, really need to watch out for. Okay, very quick thought for today. If this is your first time watching these videos, every day I have a thought for today. And uh, uh, it's, it's been interesting. Um, I suppose I'm, a lot of these thoughts are coming from my own head as I think about this whole process we're going through here. But uh, the idea of resilience, you know, um, I, I, I've experienced many challenges over time and I'm pretty resilient. Not fantastically resilient, but I'm pretty resilient. It's a key trait and in tough times, resilience is good because if you can keep fighting through it, uh, there will always be a new dawn, there will always be a new day. It's an important uh, Thing to have to be a bit resilient and i think farmers in particular are naturally resilient anyway it's the nature of the game they're in okay happy safe farming that's tough for the <laughs>